I, I, I know he might not play a lot, but word is Mike Hill's at least going to be eligible this week. Is Can you speak about having him back, with getting a fifth-year senior like that back? Yeah, it's a good shot in the arm at midseason to get a guy back whose experience has played. Uh, again, I don't know what, what it's going to be, how much playing time we'll see. That'll all play out how uh, Coach Jay plans to use him with. He's an experienced guy who's played really good football for us over, over time. Have you had to keep his head up, being some, like being out half the regular season? Have you had to kind of keep his head up, or maybe Coach Johnson's job? I don't know. We all have. But, yeah. You know, Mike's Mike's taking a great attitude about it, and now it's done. So we gotta go. How's Draymond looked this week? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know what that means by the end of the week, but uh, what we asked him to do today, he looked good. So just keep going step by step. What did you talk to the team about? regards to targeting and tackling? Well, it's not as a result of the last couple of weeks. We've talked to him about it, uh, you know, from training camp on. We, we talk a lot about a strike zone, where you're allowed to tackle. And, uh, you know, there's certain things that when you do it, instantly you're gonna, are gonna uh, elicit a, a targeting foul. And uh, we just have to be more careful, we have to be a little uh, careful, so not a, but we want to play aggressive. We have to be smarter with our aggression. How would have been more you when that, when that call was made? How what? How would have more you? I mean, you get livid about a lot. I mean, you just, <laughs> you got to move on because you got to the next play, you know? But you knew right away that's, well, yes. That doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, I feel like in the sport right now, like you just said, no matter what, if there's a, a hit that's that big, that a flag's going to come. Is there a balance that you can, still in your players that is play aggressively but at the same time I mean you know what I mean it's just yeah. I think it all comes back to the strike zone you know where you can tackle a guy and if you just do that you know certain things I, I say this to my sons I say it to this team see what you hit if your eyes are up and you see what you hit and you hit in the strike zone you're not going to get a penalty and uh, they have instant replay to, to you know make sure that if it was too fast for the naked eye that they can address it. So we just got to do a better job. Do you have to say something to Denzel when he did all those things and he still wasn't moved from the game? Yeah, just got to move on. <laughs> Greg, when you, when you look at the way Nick Bosa is playing, he came in with a lot of hype and he seems to be really moving up to that now. When you watch him play, what do you see? Has it been better than what you guys envisioned or how would you evaluate the way he's come on? He's playing very well. Yeah, I think uh, our expectation level is very high for him. Number one, he's an incredible athlete in his own right. Number two, he's following his brother, who's yeah. an incredible player. So I think the expectation level is high, and I think he's fulfilling them. And, you know, we just we just keep challenging around here. If it's going well, enhance it. Just keep making it better. And that's the challenge to Nick right now is, you know, how good can he get? That's what we challenge him to do. Does a coach ever think what his stats might look like if he got to play more than like 20 reps a game? Uh. Yes and no. I mean, I think you know when you're winning by that much, we're not going to risk injury, yeah. right? Early in the season, we didn't all like that we played 90 something plays in that first game. So you know, let's find a happy medium. Your hey, linebacking you core, are you happy game? with where they're at uh, midway through the regular season? The linebacking core. As a coach, you're never pleased, right? You want to get better. Uh, are we getting better? Yeah. Not fast enough for any of us, including them. But they are getting better. As long as we can continue to do that, and get better and better and better. You know, it's, uh, Get pretty good by the end of the year. What are some areas they need to improve at? Oh, it's our whole team. It's not just the linebackers. Right. It's details of fitting the runs, details in, uh, in our pass, going consistently at the highest possible level we can. Those are things that is a challenge for our whole team. Hey, Greg, so many of your opponents this year, our teams are going from a 4-3 defense to a 3-4. As a defensive coordinator, I know it's not your scheme, but is that where the college game is headed for some reason? Or is that just coincidence? Is yeah, I think it's preference. You know, I think there's still a lot of people. There's a lot of people that are playing hybrid type defenses. You know, so I think they got, you know, football's a really. I think everything is. It's a game where it goes in cycles, and everything repeats itself. It may repeat itself in a little different form. You know, all this gun run and RPO. I mean, all that stuff was done 50 years ago. It was called something different. So many of your players have said there's been something different about practice the past couple weeks. Have you seen a little extra in workouts? And if so, what was the switch that was flipped? I think, I think the Oklahoma game kind of flipped a lot of switches. And uh, you know what? 
we know, I think our whole organization understands we can only control one thing, and that's how hard we work. And if that's going to be good enough at the end, that's going to be good enough. And if it isn't, well, then you know what? You live with no regret. That's kind of where we're what we're trying to do is, as a football team and as a defense is leave it out there on the field and see where that stacks up at the end of the year. Greg, you up there number, they're number 22, the running back, uh, Ozigbo, or Ozigbo, yes. right, how you pronounce it, I mean, friends with uh, What just jumps out at you about him? He's, I think he's had three straight 100-yard games. You see him sort of like getting some confidence going. Very hard to get down. You know, he, he has uh, a lot of yards after contact. No, he's an old guy. And he runs, you know, they have a scheme that's designed for a back like him. Yeah. And, uh, I think they're confident in what they're doing. So we, we really gonna have to. What happens is in, in those kind of offenses, what might be a one or two or three yard gain in the first quarter, if the game is close and they keep they're able to keep running and running and running, those turn into five or six yard gains if you don't really muster it up. So it's going to be a challenge, a little different kind of football this week. As you've watched, I know you don't watch a continual loop of play, but like your quarterback, Tanner Lee, seemed to be throwing the ball up and grab, grabs early, at least this year, according to their guys out there. Do you see him playing a little more disciplined? What have what you seen out of him? He's the, he's the, you know, the transfer kid from QA. I know he is, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> early on, you know, against Northern Illinois, he gave a few pick sixes there, a couple pick sixes with us. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he was under some duress, and I think as he as he's getting more experience, the hardest thing when you coach a quarterback is to let a bad play die and move on to the next play. And early on, it looked like he was struggling letting a bad play die. I think he's learning that more and more. And, you know, we're going to have to do something. They they do a good job with their protections, so we're going to have to really work hard to affect the passer. Because if we don't, he's a very fundamentally sound quarterback and he's got a good arm. I walked up here late, uh, you may have been asked this, but you know, y'all have had three guys DQ'd in the last two games out of the secondary for hits, one of which, of course, the Big Ten <laughs> said was a, was a wrong call on Denzel Ward. But what are, what are y'all reinforcing? What are y'all talking about in that realm this week as you prepare going forward? Well, again, it, it's not just this week. It's something that we talk about constantly. And that is, you know, number one, see what you hit. If you keep your eyes up and you see what you hit, that's the number one for safety and number two for performance. The second thing is we have a strike zone that we talk about. We need to hit in that strike zone. Anything other than that, you can anticipate a penalty. And uh, certainly in the last seven or eight years, they've really cracked down on that. And I think it's a good thing. I, mean, I don't think the game's ever been more safe than it is today. And uh, good thing we did that. Right? We have, we have, some big problems, and we, we just got to make sure that when it is uh, called, you know, they have a system in place for review. I think, it's, I think the whole thing is a positive move for football. We just got to do it right.